Hey, you totally caught me talking about rocks. I am talking about my favorite fossil today, actually. Petrified wood. That's right. I absolutely love this stuff. It is beautiful. It's amazing. And Arizona is known for its awesome rainbow colored petrified wood like all of these beautiful minerals that make up this amazing petrified wood a quick rundown on what petrified wood is or pre-mineralized wood is what they like to call it they don't like to use the word petrification because it's not exactly what happens with this it is a fossil and so it is a fossil process now Millions of years ago, these giant forests, uh, particularly for the petrified wood in Arizona, or the pre-mineralized wood, there was a giant ash flow, or I would say giant eruption, that caused a huge bunch of ash to basically disrupt this whole forest, knock it over, and completely cover it. Now, the best petrified wood anywhere me is going to happen because it was immediately covered like instantaneously before decay could happen so it means it had to be void completely void of any oxygen and anything to disrupt it any critters anything to like burrow into it although finding burrow holes from a bug that was in the tree at one point in time are awesome that's a whole nother like topic however it's completely void of oxygen. It's covered with sediment, silts, that kind of thing. And then over time, more and more sediment gets covered over the top of it. Water starts to leach into the sediment and dissolve different elements that are inside of the sediment. So all of your cool, beautiful, pretty minerals. And they start to replace the organic material inside of the petrified wood. So all of the pore spaces slowly gets filled up with the elements that are dissolved from the water. So it would be this, you know, a, a slow, slow, slow process. And it's not like just regular rainwater, although it can, depending on how acidic it is. It's usually hot water, warm water, that kind of a thing. De again, depending on, there are some constraints. But basically, all the pore space gets, you know, filled in, and then that mineral starts to harden over time. This is, a, this, again, it's a very, very slow process. Because of the pore space and all of the, the organic material being completely replaced by minerals, you can get amazing textures of the actual bark. You can see, like this one, you can actually see the rings of the tree. Hopefully you can anyways. You can see all of them going down as they go this way. Again, this one, you can also see the bark on the outside, that texture. You can even see how thick the bark layer was from the outside to the inside of it and then all of the, I would say, the smoother texture just because the inside of a tree on the inside is a lot smoother. So the minerals are exactly representing the same organic structure that they're replacing. If they get to cool slowly, like this one, and I'm assuming that this was either a hollow void or sometimes the heart of the tree, you get awesome crystals. And those are just perfect mineral quartz crystals. Isn't that cool? So it, it means that that completely filled up with fluid. There was a big void, a lot of time, and you got perfect crystals inside of this little piece of petrified wood. And you can see the outside texture. You can see Again, some of the rings, that kind of thing. So it's awesome. I, the, the wood is amazing. Each one of the minerals inside of it are coming, excuse me, each one of the colors inside of it is coming from a different mineral. Manganese, titanium, nickel, chromium. Uh, manganese, did I say that? Or magnesium, both. But iron also, a lot of iron. Iron is responsible for purple, yellow, brown, red, uh, and then even a mixture of blacks. Your, your titaniums can be uh, your, your pinks and sometimes uh, help with the blues, help with the blacks. Your magnesium can 
help with the blacks, your manganese can help with blacks, can help with pinks, can help with purples. It depends on the ratio and whatever else the minerals are there. Your chromiums are going to be your green. I don't know if we have any greens in here. We have a lot of yellows in this one, which is interesting. I don't have any, any green wood at the moment. The coolest piece of petrified wood I've found. I don't know if you can see behind me. See this guy over here? It's pretty big, the sunlight's on it, so it's kind of washed it out, and it's right beside the, uh, the teal looking piece, which is a giant piece of chrysocolla malachite over there. Anyways, that big old piece right there, I found that by accident. That's my second favorite piece. But I had to take a nature hike real quick, and I had to go so bad, I went running through this field and to, to just go over the top of the hill and over the other side. I tripped over that. And on the way back, I went, <gasps> so I walked back to the car trying to carry this giant piece of wood. Absolutely awesome. But this piece that I'm about to show you is my favorite, favorite, favorite piece for multiple, multiple reasons. But <clears throat> this is a giant, well, I guess it's not that big. I can hold it but it is a log of black petrified wood. And you can see the rings, look at that. You can see the center, you can see the outside. Um, I even, like there's a little little bit of bark left on it. Uh, the stuff in the mineral, or the middle, geez, uh, is blue. You got some opal within the wood also. So, and then on the outside you can, this is really cool. You see these guys right here? Those are knot holes. And what's cool is if you look on the other side, you can see the branch, like the, the, outer, the outer branch on this side as well. So it's got several different knot holes in it, plus all of those amazing rings. It's actually really heavy. But I found this in a wash in Cedarville, California. And I was walking up the wash. I thought it was just like pretty cool spots and it was like one of those rock hound intuition sort of things where I was like, I am going to go look for petrified wood today. Cause I was actually up going to the Sheldon wildlife reserve. And this was probably my second time going up there. And I really loved that area because it's where I first started opal hunting. And it's what really got me into becoming a geologist. Anyways, I found this, I thought it was awesome. There's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of titanium in this. There's a lot of iron and manganese and all of those colors together is what is making up this black color. But, you know, short and long, a tree has to be buried by ash sediment, some kind of a flow, be completely void of oxygen and then water gets in there, replaces the organic material with minerals. And then you get your pre-mineralized wood also known as petrified wood. That's all I got for these guys today. I just think they're amazing and awesome. And literally it is my favorite fossil. It, it makes me so extremely happy. So you totally got me talking about rocks. I'll see you guys in the next one.